Hello, I'm Atu Jumir and you're watching News Pulse on Hornbill TV. Now, headlines. Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia during a press conference on Sunday said that the coal crisis in the country can stop everything including industries but the centre is denying it. Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra on Sunday said nobody was safe under the Narendra Modi government and this included the poor, the Dalit community and women, adding, however, billionaire friends of the regime were managing fine. The 13th round of India-China commander level talks began on Sunday in Moldo on the Chinese side at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, reports said. The talks are taking place amid renewed tensions along the line of control between Indian and Chinese troops. Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia during a press conference on Sunday said that the coal crisis in the country can stop everything including industries but the centre is denying it. Sisodia further said that if the centre does not take any step, another crisis will rise in the country. The centre had done the same thing when the country grappled with oxygen crisis. They would not accept there is a problem. He added, Union Power Minister R.K. Singh today said there isn't any coal crisis and that Chief Minister Arvind Kejwal should not have written a letter to the Prime Minister on the issue. It is said that a Union Cabinet Minister has adopted such a responsible approach, Sisodia said at the press conference. This clearly shows that the central government is making excuses to run away from the crisis, he added. Kai power plants se bhi hume... सूचना मिल रही है जगह जगह आप लोग न्यूज़ में दिखा रहे हैं कि कौन से पावर प्लांट बंद हो गए कहाँ कोल का क्राइसिस है इस सब के बीच आज केंद्रीय ऊर्जा मंत्री श्री आर के सिंह जी ने एक प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस की और उन्होंने उसमें किसी भी तरह के कोल क्राइसिस की संभावना को खारिज किया पंजाब की सरकार कह रही है यूपी की सरकार कह रही है गुजरात की सरकार भी कह रही है कि साहब पावर कोल का क्राइसिस है राजस्थान की सरकार कह रही है कई राज्य सरकारों ने बताया है कि वो किस तरह से पावर कट प्लान कर रहे हैं ये भी सूचनाएं आ रही हैं कि उत्तर प्रदेश सहित कई जगहों पर पावर प्लांट बंद हो गए हैं मैं लेटेस्ट देख रहा था छः पावर प्लांट के बारे में तो न्यूज़ हैं कि वो बंद हो रहे हैं कोल क्राइसिस की वजह से और केंद्र सरकार कह रही है कि कोई क्राइसिस नहीं है इसका मतलब केंद्र सरकार क्राइसिस को हल नहीं करना चाह रही या केंद्र सरकार के पास कोई समाधान नहीं है अगर हल नहीं करना चाह रहे समाधान नहीं है तब भी तो पहले क्राइसिस को स्वीकार तो करो सरकारें इस चीज़ से नहीं चलती हैं कि राज्य सरकार अगर कहे कि क्राइसिस है तो आप बोलो कोई क्राइसिस नहीं है बंद करो बकवास कर रहे हो इससे नहीं चलती हैं सरकारें थोड़ा सहयोगवादी रवैया लेके चले केंद्र अगर देश के सामने कोई क्राइसिस आ रहा है तो राज्य सरकारों और केंद्र सरकारों को सबको मिलकर उसका प्लान बनाना चाहिए ये नहीं करना चाहिए कि कोई क्राइसिस नहीं आँख बंद करके बैठ जाओ मुँह फिर के बैठ जाओ on Saturday, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal shot off a letter to the Prime Minister Narendra Modi over a power crisis Delhi could face. I'm personally keeping a close watch over the situation. We are trying our best to avoid it, Kejriwal said. The 13th round of Corps Commander level talks to address the ongoing military standoff between India and China along the line of actual control in eastern Ladakh will begin in the Molto on the Chinese side at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, according to army sources. The Ministry of External Affairs on Thursday had said that it expected China to work towards early resolution of the remaining issue along the LAC in eastern Ladakh by fully abiding by bilateral agreements and protocols. Earlier, External Affairs Minister S.J. Shangar on the sidelines of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Dushanbe, Tajikistan met Chinese counterpart Wang Ye and both the leaders discussed the border tensions and disengagement along the line of actual control in border areas.
Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra on Sunday said nobody was safe under the Narendra Modi government and this included the poor, the Dalit community and women, adding however billionaire friends of the regime were managing fine. Addressing a massive crowd at the Kisan Nyai, Justice for Farmers, Rally in Varanasi Vadra said, this country is not the property of the PM and his ministers. This country is yours. If you are not aware, you will not be able to save your own country and yourself. You have made this country beginning her speech with a recital of shocklers, the Kandi Skion said, Today is the fourth day of Navatra. I am observing fast today. I want to start with Mas Tuti. As this is the time of Navatra, I thought of speaking of my heart with all of you. The gathering was earlier addressed by Congress Uttar Pradesh Unit Head Ajay Kumar Lalu and Chhattisgarh Chief Minister Pubesh Bagal. Corona ke samay जहां जहां से रिपोर्ट आई वहां से वही रिपोर्ट आई कि जनता त्रस्त है परेशान है और सरकार मदद के बजाय आक्रमक हो गई है जो भी सुविधाएं थी अगर कोई कहता था कि मेरे पास सुविधा नहीं है मेरे पास ऑक्सीजन नहीं है कोई अस्पताल ने कह दिया कि ऑक्सीजन खत्म हो रहा है तो सरकार उन पर आक्रमण कर रही थी उनको न्याय की उम्मीद नहीं थी उनको ये उम्मीद नहीं थी कि ये सरकार संकट के समय उनकी मदद करेगी India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage crossed the landmark of 94 crores with 66,85,415 vaccine doses administered in the last 24 hours, the Union Minister informed on Sunday. According to the provisional report issued by the Ministry at 7 a.m. on Sunday, India has so far administered 94 crore, 70,10,175 COVID-19 vaccines. This has been achieved through 92,12,314 sessions. Meanwhile, the Health Ministry earlier in the day informed that India reported 18,166 fresh COVID-19 infections in the last 24 hours, the lowest in over seven months. India reported 204 COVID-19 deaths in the last 24 hours. The death toll in the country now stands at 4 lakhs 50,589. The active case load of the country is presently at 2 lakh 30,971. Consequently, India's recovery rate stands at 97.99%, the highest since March 2020. Sounding the poll bulge in poll bone, Manipur, PJP President J.B. Nada on Saturday said the party will return to power in the state on grounds of the development work done since 2017. Addressing a public rally at Sai Ground, Pishnupur in Manipur, Nada called the state the gateway for Adma nearby Bharat. Attacking the previous Congress government in the state, the PJP leader said that corruption, commission and criminalization were the order of the day in Manipur before the PJP formed the government here. He further praised the current PJP-led government in the state and said that Chief Minister N. Biren Singh brought only development during the past four years. Manipur is now on the mainstream of development because people elected PJP-led government at the right time in 2017, he claimed. Among the northeastern states, Manipur is taking the lead in the Adma Nibar Bharat campaign, said Nada. कि किस तरीके से नए-नए इनिशिएटिव्स हमने लिए हैं और उन नए इनिशिएटिव्स का क्या-क्या अर्थ बना है यह मैं जरूर चाहूंगा आपने मेरी बात सुनी है आपका बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद पुनः आपको बधाई और यह जो कार्यालय को समर्पण करने का मुझे मौका मिला है इसके लिए भी मैं आपको बधाई देना चाहता हूं मैं इसमें एक बात जरूर बता देना चाहता हूं कि लगभग 525 ऐसे कार्यालय देश भर में बन रहे हैं हम हर डिस्ट्रिक्ट पे कार्यालय बना रहे हैं और लगभग 175 कार्यालय बन चुके हैं और 180 पर काम चल रहा है यह भारतीय जनता पार्टी है जो 21वीं शताब्दी में पूरी ताकत के साथ आगे बढ़ने के लिए लगी हुई है और यहां भी हम हर डिस्ट्रिक्ट में बनाने वाले हैं ध्यान में रखिए आप कार्यकर्ताओं का सहयोग करते हुए और आप लोगों के साथ मिलकर के यह काम हम करने वाले हैं the Mumbai drug bust case is taking various twists and turns. In a major setback for Shah Rukh Khan's son, Aryan Khan, a Mumbai court on Friday rejected his bail plea and of two others who were among the eight arrested. Additional Chief Metropolitan Magistrate R.M. Nirilkar rejected the bail applications of Aryan, Arbas, Merton and Moon Moon. 
the major on grounds of maintainability upholding the contingents of the legal team of the Narcotics Control Bureau. Aryan Khan's bail application hearing is likely on Monday. The developments came a day after all the eight accused were sent to judicial custody and they shifted to the regular prisons from the NCP lockup. Meanwhile, various celebrities as well as the actors' fans are pouring in support not just over social media but also outside his house in Manat. The Congress on Sunday wrote to the Rashtrapati Bhavan seeking an appointment with Pre President Ramnath Kovind for seven-member party delegations led by Rahul Gandhi to meet him and present a detailed memorandum of facts in connection with the Lakhimpur Kerry incident that claimed the lives of eight people earlier this month. The Congress delegation will consist of Priyanka Gandhi Vadra, A.K. Antony, Malik Arjun Karke, V.C. Venukobal, Kulam Nabi Azad and Adir Ranjan Chaudhary, besides Rahul Gandhi, who will lead the delegation. The shocking incident of Broad Day Massacre of farmers in Lakhimpur Kiri in Uttar Pradesh has shaken the conscience of the entire nation, the Congress stated in its letter. Even more tragic are the open warnings given by the Union Minister of State for Home Affairs, Ajay Mishra Tenni, consequent trampling of farmers under the hard drip owned by the minister and his family, said the Congress. Farmers who were eyewitnesses have openly stated that they were run over by vehicle being driven by the son of Union Minister of State for Home Affairs, the letter read. Despite all-round protests and intervention of the Supreme Court, no decisive actions has been taken either against the guilty or against the minister, the letter further read. The delegation of the Congress party seeks an appointment with your good self and priority at the earliest to present a detailed memorandum of facts, it added. As many as eight people, including four farmers, died in the Lakhimpur Kerry incident on October 3rd. The government has permitted the export of Russia's single-dose COVID-19 vaccine Sputnik Light domestically produced here as the jab has not yet been approved for emergency use in India, sources said on Sunday. Indian drugs firm Hetero Biopharma Limited has been allowed to export 40 lakh doses of Sputnik Light to Russia, sources in the know of the development stall PTI. Sputnik Light is the same as component one of the Russian vaccine Sputnik V, which is being used in India's entire COVID inculation program after getting emergency use authorization from India's drug regulator in April. The Russian ambassador had urged the Indian government to allow the export of Sputnik Light produced by Hetero Biopharma, one of the partners of the Russian Direct Investment Fund, RDIF, in the production of the jab to his country till the vaccine gets emergency use authorization from India's drugs regulator. The Shamator Battalion of the Sam Rifles observed World Mental Health Day and an awareness program on women's health on October 10 at Shangpur Baptist Church of Shangpur Village, Shamator, in Twensang district of Nagaland. They even commemorated Azadi Kamrit Mohatsav and focused on creating awareness among the local population regarding the importance of having World Mental Health Day as the global COVID-19 pandemic had resulted in creating a major impact on people's mental health. Some groups including health and frontline workers, students, people living alone, common people, farmers and those with pre-existing mental health conditions have been particularly affected. Topics about good mental health were given to the people at the gathering. A program on women's health including antenatal and obstetric care was also covered on the same day. A discourse was given by Jacob, CMO of the Shemato Battalion on women's health issues such various gynecological diseases and timely medical interventions and antenatal care obstetrics, care, routine immunization, family planning, contraceptive kits, prevention of unwanted pregnancies, preventive measures on sexually transmitted infections such as HIV.
Madhya Pradesh's Gwalior recorded a total of 39 new cases of dengue, informed Dr. Manish Sharma, Chief Medical and Health Officer Gwalior. While speaking to NI, Manish Sharma said that a total of 39 new dengue cases were reported yesterday in the district. The medical teams have been deployed to conduct tests for growing larval mosquitoes in the areas where these cases were recorded, Sharma said. Anti-larvae and fogging activities are being done and there are six hotspots where medical teams have been deployed. A campaign to create awareness among the masses to combat dengue also has been initiated, he added. Urging the people to remain cautious, the health department asked the people to cooperate with the measures undertaken by the department to control dengue and other related diseases. Officials of Power Ministry, BSES and Tata Power reached the residence of Union Power Minister R.K. Singh for a meeting of a coal shortage at power plants. Power blackout in the national capital. The officials of Delhi Power Ministry, BSES, and Data Power reached the residence of Union Power Minister R.K. Singh on Sunday for a meeting of a coal shortage at power plants. Delhi Power Minister Sadhyendra Jain yesterday cautioned that there could be complete blackout in the national capital after two days if power plants supplying electricity to the national capital do not receive an immediate supply of coal. In order to resolve the power crisis in Delhi, Jain said that government is even ready to to buy expensive electricity at present. Earlier today, Delhi Chief Minister Avin Kejwal also warned the national capital could face a power crisis. Kejwal in a tweet said, I am personally keeping a close watch over the situation. We are trying our best to avoid it. He also wrote a letter to Prime Minister Narendra Modi on s Saturday saying that there is a coal shortage situation that has affected the power generation plant supplying power to national capital territory and requested him to intervene in the matter. After summoning the country's highest court twice, the pressure came on the police and they had to arrest the minister's son. The video of the Union Minister of State is viral in which he is threatening the farmers. It is a straight case of criminal conspiracy. First, he threatened. Then the farmers were killed under the conspiracy farmers' car. The minister should also be arrested and he should also be made an accused. All the evidence is available in the form of video. Don't know why the police are waiting. Anyone's death is said, but if you forcefully mount a vehicle on an unarmed person, it is obvious that the people with them will also catch you. Fight and fight and even die. It is also commonly seen in road accidents. The customer base of the power industry is crores of people, big industrialists, are involved in this coal game so that the coal of those industrialists can get better rates. The government can benefit those industrialists. This crisis has been created for that. In a few days, it will become quite common that which big industrialist has got the benefit of this. All the rules are made in the country itself. When you know that theft is happening, why are steps not being taken to stop the theft? The law of the country are made for the people, not for the Russian mafia. The AAP has said the government's Sarkar Tumcha Dari program has been nothing but a PR jumla and its failed attempt. Instead of reaching to the doorsteps of Gaons, the government is asking Gaons to assemble again at the town hall. Moreover, the government is offering no solution to Gaon cars, but only political bashans, according to a press note. In the press note, AAP states that Gaons have been waiting for service and are forced to line up for schemes and they can't even get an ambulance at the doorstep. It is not enough to just announce a PR campaign, but the government needs to work like Arvind Kejwal for its citizens. AAP's doorstep delivery scheme allows citizens to ask for services via a toll-free number and have mobile shayakyas turn up at the doorstep. The call to 1076 leads to a call center who finds out what is that the citizen wants, states the press note. It is also about time the government stopped wasting Gao taxes on its political campaigning, stated AAP Goa Vice President Valmiki Nayak. The National Investigation Agency on Sunday carried out searches at 16 places in Jammu and Kashmir in connection with two cases, ISIS Voice of Hind case and the Padinti IED recovery case. The ND Terror Agency carried out simultaneous searches in various districts in the Union Territory 
with the assistance of the Central Reserve Police Force and Jammu and Kashmir Police. The NIA had also conducted searches at two locations in Karnataka's Patkal and arrested key accused Jufri Jawhar Tamuti in the ISI's Voice of Hind case. The case was registered on June 29 this year in connection with the conspiracy of the proscribed terrorist organization, the Islamic State, to radicalize and recruit impressionable Muslim youth in India to wage violent jihad against India. NIA said that ISIS terrorists operating from various conflict zones along the ISIS scatters in India have created a network by assuming pseudo-online identities wherein ISIS-related propaganda material is disseminated for radicalizing and recruiting members to the fault of ISIS. The NIA had conducted multiple searches in Jammu and Kashmir on July 11 this year in the same case and had arrested three accused Umar Nisar, Tanvir Ahmad Pat and Ramiz Ahmad Lone, all residents of Achabal area of Anantnang district. A cyber entity Abu Hazir Al Padri, a key operative of ISIS who is involved in the translation of Voice of Hind to South Indian languages and its further dissemination, was identified as Jufri Jawhar Damudi and arrested on August 6 this year in a joint operation of NIA and Karnataka police. The agency said that the cyber IT was also used to radicalize and recruit people. The conspiracy by LET was aimed at causing an explosion in Jammu using the IED. NIA had registered the case on July 19 and had earlier arrested three persons in this case. The investigation has revealed that Pakistan-based handlers of proscribed terror outfit LET and their associates based in JK were planning terrorist activities in the Union territory using the pseudo-acronym The Resistance Front, an offshoot of LET, so as to maintain plausible deniability. October 10 is celebrated as World Mental Health Day. It was observed for the first time in 1992, October 10. It started as an annual activity for the World Federation for Mental Health by the then Deputy Secretary General Richard Hunter. The day is now officially commemorated every year on October 10. This day provides an opportunity for all stakeholders working on mental health issues to talk about the work and what more needs to be done to make mental health care a reality for people worldwide. Celebrating this day in Delhi, a group of cyclothin went cycling around the city for 40 kilometers to spread awareness on World Mental Health Day. That's all we have for now. Keep watching Hornbill TV.